All right, let's dive into this Google Apps script thing. GAS. GAS. Okay, I like it. You sent me a whole bunch of guides and tutorials, and honestly, even skimming through them, I already started thinking of a million things I could do with this. Oh, yeah, it's really powerful. So first things first, what is it? Break it down for me like I'm five, you know, in a way that anyone listening can understand. So basically, it's a scripting platform developed by Google that lets you, the user, add functionality to your Google apps, so Google Workspace apps like mm -hmm. Sheets and Docs and Gmail, Drive, Calendar, all of that. So instead of just using those apps as they are, I can like supercharge them. Yeah, you can make them do exactly what you want them to do. Okay, that sounds awesome. But I'm not a coder, so how easy is it to actually use? You'd be surprised. It uses JavaScript, which is, you know, a fairly simple coding language. Mm -hmm. And there are tons of resources out there, like extensive documentation, tutorials, and a whole community to help you. So I don't need to, like, go back to school for computer science to get started. No, not at all. You can literally start with something as simple as displaying a little hello world message. Okay, that's reassuring. So let's say I want to get started. Where do I even begin? Well, first you need to understand the different types of GAS scripts. There are bound scripts and standalone scripts. Okay, what's the difference? Bound scripts are attached to a specific Google app. Like, let's say you want a script that runs only within a certain Google Sheet. That would be a bound script. Got it. And a standalone script. A standalone script can access multiple Google services. It's not bound to just one. So, for example? Let's say you wanted to create a custom menu in Google Sheets to, like, trigger certain functions. Mm -hmm. That would use a bound script because it's specific to that sheet. But if you wanted a script that grabs data from a spreadsheet and then sends you an email with that data, well, that would be a standalone script because it's using both sheets and Gmail. Okay, so that makes sense. And you're telling me I can learn to do all of this. Absolutely. And one of the coolest things about GAS is the power of automation. Tell me more. I love automation. Makes me feel like I'm living in the future. Right, so for example, you could use GAS to automate sending invoices from Google Sheets. How does that work? You could have a sheet with all your invoice data, then GAS could take that data, format it into an invoice template, and even send it to your clients automatically via email. Wow, so I could literally be like on the beach sipping a mojito while GAS is doing all my work for me. Pretty much, yeah. It so frees up so much time and mental energy. I'm liking this more and more, but it sounds like there's even more to GAS than just automation. Definitely. You can create custom functions for Google Sheets, stuff that doesn't exist natively. Okay, like what? Give me an example. Let's say you need a function that calculates the average of a range of cells, but you want to ignore any non-numeric values. There's no built-in function for that in Sheets, but you could write a custom function using GAS to do exactly that. So I can basically make Google Sheets do whatever I want it to do? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. And it gets even cooler. You can also interact with APIs from other platforms and services. APIs. Remind me what those are again. APIs are like messengers that allow different applications to talk to each other. So you could use GIS to connect to, say, a social media API and pull in real-time data into your spreadsheet mm -hmm. or a weather API or a financial data API. The possibilities are endless. Okay, my mind is officially blown. I feel like I need to go back and listen to this again to process all of this. But before we move on to more advanced stuff, Let's talk about actually building these GIS scripts. Is it really something I can learn to do, or do I need to be, like, a coding wizard? You absolutely can learn it. It's not as hard as you might think. Really? Yeah, the learning curve is actually pretty gentle. You can start with small, simple projects and work your way up. So no coding boot camp required? No, just a willingness to learn and experiment. There are tons of great resources to guide you along the way. Okay, that's reassuring. But you mentioned different types of GAS scripts earlier, bound and standalone. Are there any other types I need to be aware of? Yeah, actually, web apps are another type of GAS script, and this is where things get really interesting. Web apps? Yeah, you can actually build interactive web applications using GAS. Wait, so I could create, like, a little website using GAS? What would that even look like? So imagine this, you have a team, and you want a way for everyone to submit feedback directly into a Google Sheet. Okay. I could see how that would be useful. Right. So with GAS, you could build a custom feedback form that people can access online. The responses would then automatically go into a Google Sheet for you to review. That's amazing. So I could build a little custom tool for my team. Exactly. And you can even use HTML and CSS to style those web apps and make them look really nice. 
this is blowing my mind. I had no idea you could do all of this with GIS. Yeah, it's really powerful. It's like a hidden superpower within Google Workspace. I can't wait to dive deeper into all of this, but let's take a little break now and come back to explore some more advanced GIS magic. Sounds good. We'll get into some really cool stuff in the next part. Awesome. Okay, I feel like we've covered a lot of ground, but I'm eager to see GIS in action. Can you walk me through a real world example, like something people are actually using this for? Sure. Let's say you're a teacher, right? And you've got a bunch of students and you need to send them all personalized feedback on their assignments. Yeah, I can see how that would be a pain to do manually. Exactly. So with GAS, you could create a script that takes the grades from a Google Sheet, generates personalized feedback messages for each student based on their grade, and then automatically sends those emails out. Wow, that would save so much time. <laughs> right. And think about all the other things you could automate as a teacher Grading quizzes, tracking attendance, creating certificates, GAS can handle it all. I'm starting to see how this could be a game changer for all kinds of people, not just teachers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's not just about saving time either. It's about accuracy, too. How so? Well, think about manually copying data from one spreadsheet to another. It's so easy to make mistakes. Ugh, don't even remind me. I've pulled all-nighters doing that kind of data entry before, and I'm sure I messed something up. Right, but with GAS, you can automate the entire process. So you eliminate the risk of human error and ensure that your data is always accurate and up to date. OK, I'm sold on the automation aspect. But what about those web apps we talked about earlier? What are some real world examples of how people are using those? Well, imagine you're organizing a conference, right? Uh -huh. And you need a way for people to register online. Yeah, that's usually a clunky process. Right. But with GAS, you could create a custom registration form. People could fill it out online and their information would automatically be added to a Google Sheet. That's so much smoother than using some third-party tool or trying to manage everything manually. Exactly. And it's not just about registration forms either. You could create quizzes, surveys, feedback forms, even simple games using GAS. This is blowing my mind. I'm starting to see GAS less as a tool and more as a platform for creating all kinds of solutions. That's a great way to put it. And one of the things that makes it so powerful is its ability to connect to other services using APIs. Right. The APIs, we talked about them earlier, but I'm still a bit fuzzy on how they actually work in practice. Can you give me a real world example? Sure. Let's say you're a social media manager and you want to keep track of all the mentions of your brand on Twitter. OK, that sounds useful. Right. So with GAS, you could connect to the Twitter API and pull in all the tweets that mention your brand. Then you could do all sorts of cool things with that data, like analyze sentiment, identify influencers, or even automatically respond to certain tweets. That's amazing. I'm starting to see how GAS can be used to connect all sorts of different dots and create these really powerful workflows. Exactly. And the more you learn about APIs and how to use them, the more possibilities will open up for you. I can't wait to dive into that. But before we get too carried away, I want to circle back to something we touched on earlier, ethical considerations. With all this power at our fingertips, it's important to make sure we're using GAS responsibly. Absolutely. It's crucial to be mindful of data privacy, user consent, and security. Can you give me some specific examples? Sure. For example, you should never use GAS to collect or access data without the user's explicit permission. And if you're handling sensitive information, like financial data or personal details, you need to take extra precautions to ensure that it's stored and transmitted securely. Those are all really important points. It's like the Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. We need to use GAS ethically and thoughtfully, making sure we're not infringing on anyone's privacy or doing anything harmful. Well said. OK, so we've talked about the awesome potential of GAS, some real world examples and the importance of ethical considerations. But now I want to get into the nitty gritty of actually building these GAS solutions. What are some best practices and tips for making sure our scripts are efficient, secure and don't accidentally cause any chaos? OK, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and start building. But where do I even begin? Give me the inside scoop on writing GAS code that's efficient, secure and, well, doesn't break everything. Great question. It all starts with good coding habits. Like what? I'm all ears. Well, one of the most important things is to write clean and organized code. Think about it like this. If you're working on a big project, you don't want to just dump everything into one giant messy pile, right? Yeah, that would be a nightmare to sort through later. Exactly. The same principle applies to code. So 
use meaningful variable names, add comments to explain what your code is doing, and break down complex logic into smaller, more manageable functions. Makes sense. It's like organizing your files. You want to be able to find things easily later on. Right. And it makes it easier for other people to understand your code too, which is important if you're collaborating on a project. Okay, so good coding habits are key. What else should I keep in mind? Well, performance is another important consideration. As in making sure my scripts run smoothly and efficiently. Exactly. You don't want your scripts to be slow or clunky. Yeah, no one wants to wait forever for something to load. Right. So one of the best ways to optimize performance is to minimize API calls. Remind me what those are again. APIs are basically messengers that allow your GAS script to talk to other services. But every time you make an API call, it takes time and resources. Got it. So the fewer API calls, the better. Exactly. Try to batch your API calls whenever possible so you're not making tons of individual requests. And if you need to access the same data multiple times, consider caching it locally so you don't have to keep hitting the API. Okay. That makes sense. It's like planning your errands efficiently, right? Mm -hmm. Get everything done in one trip instead of making multiple back and forths. Exactly. A little planning goes a long way. And speaking of planning, security is something you should be thinking about from the very beginning. Yeah, that's crucial. I definitely don't want to accidentally expose sensitive data or create any security vulnerabilities. Absolutely. So always protect your API keys and credentials. Don't hard code them directly into your scripts. What does that mean? It means don't just write your secret keys directly into the code. Instead, store them securely using tools like the property service or script properties. Got it. It's like keeping your valuables locked up in a safe instead of leaving them out in the open. Exactly. And be careful about sharing settings when you're collaborating with others on a project. Make sure that only authorized users have access to your scripts and data. Good point. Security is a team effort. Right. And speaking of teams, version control is another important consideration if you're working with others on a GAS project. Version control. Yeah, it's basically a way to track changes to your code over time. It allows you to go back to previous versions if needed, and it prevents people from accidentally overwriting each other's work. So it's like having a time machine for your code. Exactly. GAS has a built-in version control system, and you can also use external tools like GitHub to manage your projects. Cool. I love how GAS integrates with all these other tools and services. Yeah, it's really versatile. But even with the best planning and coding practices, errors can still happen. So you need to be prepared to handle those errors gracefully. How do we do that? One of the best ways is to use something called try.catch blocks in your code. Try.catch. Yeah, it's basically a way to anticipate potential problems and provide alternative paths for your script to follow if something goes wrong. So instead of crashing, your script can catch the error, handle it appropriately, and maybe even log some information to help you troubleshoot later. That's really clever. It's like having a safety net for your code. Exactly. And speaking of safety nets, testing is another crucial aspect of GAS development. Okay, so testing is important, but how do I actually do it? GAS provides a built-in debugger that allows you to step through your code line by line, inspect variables, and see what's happening at each step. It's like having x-ray vision into your code. Wow, that sounds incredibly helpful. Yeah, it's a lifesaver for debugging. And you can also write automated tests to verify that your code is behaving as expected. Automated tests. Yeah, you can write little snippets of code that test specific parts of your script and make sure they're working correctly. So it's like having a quality control team for your code. Exactly. Automated tests can save you a ton of time and headaches in the long run. Okay, I'm definitely going to look into that. But now I'm curious about the bigger picture again. We've talked about all these awesome features and best practices, but what about the future of GS? What trends and innovations are on the horizon? That's a great question. One of the most exciting things happening right now is the integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning into GAS. Whoa! AI and GAS. Tell me more. Imagine building scripts that can analyze text, recognize images, or even make predictions based on your data. The possibilities are endless. That's mind-blowing. It's like taking automation to a whole new level. Exactly. And as AI and ML become more accessible, we can expect to see even more creative and innovative applications of GAS. Another trend is the development of more powerful and user-friendly tools for building web applications with GS. We're seeing new libraries, frameworks, and UI components that make it easier than ever to create beautiful and functional web apps that integrate seamlessly with Google Workspace. That's fantastic. 
It's exciting to see GAS constantly evolving and becoming more accessible to a wider audience. But before we wrap up, I want to leave our listeners with some final thoughts and advice. What are your top tips for someone who's just starting their GAS journey? My top tip would be to just start. Don't be afraid to dive in and experiment. Pick a small project that you're interested in and try to build it. You'll learn so much more by doing than by just reading about it. Great advice. It's all about taking that first step and building momentum. Exactly. And remember, the GAS community is incredibly supportive and welcoming. There are tons of resources available online, forums where you can ask questions, and people who are always willing to help. So don't be afraid to reach out, ask for help, and learn from others. You'll be amazed at how quickly you can progress. That's so encouraging. It's like having a whole team of cheerleaders and mentors rooting for your GAS success. Well, this has been an incredible journey into the world of Google Apps Script. We've covered everything from the basics to advanced concepts, best practices, ethical considerations, and even a glimpse into the future of automation. I feel like I've gained a whole new set of superpowers, and I can't wait to start putting them to use. It's been a pleasure sharing the power of GAS with you and our listeners. It's a truly transformative tool, and I'm excited to see all the amazing things that you and others will create with it. To our listeners, thank you for joining us on this GIS adventure. We hope you've learned something new, been inspired to automate, and are ready to unleash your own creative potential using the power of GIS. Remember, the possibilities are endless, so go forth and automate. Happy scripting. <laughs>